I know I say this all the time, but we literally have the craziest information. This year from Dragonflight as a brand new huge document was discovered on the Dragon Isles in a Naga cave that hints at so many things that it is insane that they could even fit this many hints into so few pages. So we have the biggest hints thus far that Queen Ashara is going to return and the Naga are setting the ground for that to happen. It is said that she's currently beyond the whale, which strongly indicates that the void is going to be relevant which further confirms all hints a dark hunger that was lost to the ages is mentioned and how it will return strongly indicating something with galakrond will be happening we have hints of azeroth or the old gods awakening and azeroth awakening is a being of the void so that the final prophecy will be complete finally the five torches that will light our path are actually making sense more sense than they have ever made in the past there are hints of redicron huge hints about zelatat and a bunch of other things so let's just get into unraveling all all this crazy information, this crazy document, and seeing what it is all about. So while it's been a few years since we've seen Ashara, Dragon Raja is going full steam. This video is sponsored as they're celebrating their third year anniversary. This is a fully fledged MRPG cyberpunk and open world that you can play right on your phone. Right now is literally the best time to get into Dragon Raja as all players who return can get a lot of diamonds, anniversary limited outfits, cool new motorcycles, avatars, and an avatar frame. You can get a ghost sugar outfit and a Sakura pupil and Phantom Lord motorcycles only during the third anniversary. The game is constantly growing as the open world expands and a new map Cambridge is coming with a new story and a big dynamic aura. Additionally, the 13 new class has been updated and the Shadow Fencer is available right now. You can not only deal great damage with a foil, but you can also control enemies. So it's literally never been a better time to get into Dragon Russia. You can win a ton of rewards, try the new class and the new map. All you have to do is use the promo code right on the screen or click my link in the description below. See you in game. So the point of Ashara returning has been a really popular theory even before Dragonflight was released, especially with all this old god stuff, and we know she was super tight to Nazoth, and right now Nazoth is incredibly relevant. However, I didn't want to make a video in the past on Ashara returning because I just didn't really feel like there is all that much evidence, it was really a really big shot in the dark. However, all this changed as we had just determined an incredibly interesting document in 10.0.7, like a super interesting one. So the writing itself is called a Song of the Depths, and it is actually looted in a Naga cave, so you can be almost certain that this is referring to Ashara, as they're literally writing our queen in a Naga cave, so it's really not that open to interpretation. However, this document is like all those old god whispers that we had received over the years, but like condensed into four pages on steroids and boosted ten times. So I'm not going to convolute this any further, let us get into reading this verbatim, as it is incredibly interesting, like literally every single line is interesting. Right! Rise, our queen calls to us from beyond the umbral veil. She has transcended the circle of stars and basks in her eternal grandeur. The time we have long awaited is nigh. So let's dissect this bit by bit because there's actually some crazy things that are revealed when you read between the lines. Obviously, as I said, this is Naga writing. Our queen is literally just Queen Ashara. There is not another Naga queen. Then they say she, once more confirming Ashara, and that she has transcended the Circle of Stars. As you know from BFA, the Circle of Stars is the last Nazot mechanism, the prison. It was literally a place we saw personally. And her eternal grandeur is just highborn speaking because they always worshipped Ashara, plus there is the eternal palace. What a lot of people might have actually missed in this quote though is the so-called Umbral Veil. We quite recently learned that Umbra is the Void back in Shadowlands, which means that Ashara is beyond the Veil of the Void, and we know she literally worked with Void Beings, the Old Gods, which strongly indicates that there is going to be significant Void, like the Void Realm involvement in the near future. I think this hint alone just itself is huge that she's beyond the Void Veil. Now, the document continues. Even now, the Harbinger gathers the children of the First Flesh to reclaim what was lost. They must remember their vows and serve those to whom they owe fielding. So this one is a bit more difficult to untangle, but we'll get into more pages so we get more context on what they're actually talking about. A lot of people right now are speculating that the Harbinger is Zelatat, which could be the fifth old god that was defeated in the ages past because she's relevant. In fact, she's super relevant right now. Or the Harbinger could also be Iridicron, as the guy is planning to awaken something incredibly evil under the ground. The children of the first flash could either be the old god beings or the actual native beings to Azeroth, which is more 
more likely and more than definitely related to elementals or the Jaradin and their elders. We learned from the recent Jaradin conversation that these elders are hiding underground and Veracron actually allied with them in the past and he is going underground as we speak. However, let's get to page 2 so we can get more context on what is actually going on as this is kind of out of the blue. While they toil in the deep places, we will journey to the shores of Dragon Isles, to the Blessed Isle where the World Breaker first embraced the Whispers. So the toil in the deep places with this context more than likely refers to something related to the Jaradin or the Elementals. It was literally said that these elders retreated somewhere underground and their primordial beings. It could also refer to those dwarves that are related to the Titan Forge, but personally, I doubt these guys are so relevant that the Naga would write a document about them. The other part talks about how the Naga are now sending an expedition to the Dagon Isles, which signifies that they will be super relevant, like we will get Naga and the Shara in the Naga fight. However, the second part of this page is even more interesting. As one storm recedes, another rises. The torches have been lit. The secret he buried will strike as a dagger into the hearts of his skin. Now, I know most people are super sick of this quote already, but I literally think this might finally be it. It has never been more relevant. The famous five keys to open our way, five torches to light our path. This document says that the torches have been lit. I mean, keep in mind, they specifically state torches. We have five old stones. And if you look at these old stones, they are physically, like they're literally torches. They literally look like physical torches. We've never had anything so direct related to this quote in the past. To top this all off, we have this grand return of Ashara. We have the Harbinger and all these crazy things. And if this quote was ever relevant, it is now. However, the second part of this quote is even more interesting. The secrets he buried will strike as a dagger in to the hearts of his skin. This further confirms these crazy secrets we're discovering about Deathwing and Forbidden Reach, and I really think we know nothing about what his plans actually were and what he was actually working on. This quote kind of gives foreshadowing that there is probably a mountain below Neltarian's treachery that we never knew anything about. I feel like when we learn about it, we will also learn who the Titans are, who the old gods are, how Azeroth was really ordered. So, Let's get into page 3 of this crazy Naga document. The Harbinger speaks of a primal power that seeks the end of order. Such rage can be bent to serve our ends. Once again, super cryptic, super confusing, but the end of order is obviously the end of Titan Conquest of Azeroth, and their rule over the planet and this primal power is something that was here before. Most people speculate that the Harbinger is either Eredicron or Zelatat. As I mentioned, this primal power could be something elemental, it could be the world soul of Azeroth, or it could just be the old gods, because obviously, the old gods' main goal is to end order, and seeing how long they have been on Azeroth for hundreds of thousands of years, they are essentially primordial, they were here before the world was completely reshaped. Then, we have... A hunger lost to the ages will be reclaimed. A dark heart left broken awaits the taking. This one is probably the most interesting line of this entire document. It was said that Eredicron had this crazy hunger that they recently mentioned in the cinematic, but a hunger lost to the ages was literally Gelacron, the biggest menace to Azeroth in the ancient times. Recently, there was a lot of speculation that this hunger is related to decay magic, which may be natural, but it is most likely old god related. Now, in regards to the Dark Heart left broken awaits the taking, some people speculate that this could be Morazon because he's a dark version that awaits his demise, but in my opinion, I feel like this could strongly refer to Yasharaj as well. We know his heart remained in Pandaria, it was quite literally a dark heart. There have also been other significant hints of Yasharaj being relevant once again and possibly returning and him being broken is when he was pulled out. However, on the other side, it could totally refer to something entirely different that is yet to be introduced and will be introduced in the near future. Now, the document continues. When these things come to pass, the Harbinger will fulfill the final prophecy and complete the Awakening. In my opinion, the Awakening almost certainly refers to Awakening of the Old Gods or the Awakening of Azeroth, and both could really be plausible. You can check out the video I made recently, but there is an incredibly popular theory that Azeroth is in fact a fifth Old God, or that the Old Gods actually succeeded in their mission of corrupting the World Soul, and the Titans lied that they managed to stop it in the last moment. It is also why Sargeras plunged the sword into Azeroth, because it is an Old God. The prophecy and the mission of the Old Gods was to turn the World Soul 
Temple into a being of the Void. The theory states that the old gods almost entirely succeeded, but the Titans arrived, hid this place of corruption and pretended everything was okay. This document would confirm that the final prophecy, this ultimate mission will happen and that the awakening of Azeroth as a being of the Void will finally be a thing. Lastly, we have only then shall our queen return to reign over sea and sky and earth. We must make ready. Rise, rise, soon all that was hidden will be revealed. Now, the first part of this obviously just refers to Naga loyalty to Ashara and them following their queen. However, I think the last sentence is incredibly relevant. Soon, all that was hidden will be revealed. Now, if you guys have all the recent old guy documents that we have discovered in Neltarian's personal library in Forbidden Reach, it states that the ordering of Azeroth wasn't as successful as the Titans claim, and they didn't exactly cleanse the world of the old gods as that seems to be impossible, and that they hid something beyond on the waves, something really evil and something really dark. In my opinion, I think this is what the document states, how all that was hidden will be revealed. Of course, right now, all this information is actually data mined from 10.0.7, so we could refer to multiple scenarios. As I said, the Harbinger, the Awakening, all this could be multiple characters, it could be multiple scenarios. However, what is almost 100% certain at this point is that the Naga are coming back and that Queen Ashara is going to actually play a pretty significant role either in this expansion or the next. However, However, it looks like a lot of these speculations weren't just BS because we are getting heavy hints of Xanathar being relevant, Eridicron, Galakron, and this Dark Hunger, and who knows, maybe even this outlandish theory that Azeroth is in fact an old god may end up being true. Thank you for watching, check out who is this pirate adventure to the dark side of Azeroth and returned, and also check out Azeroth Academy for videos on real world history. See you next time!